Welcome to episode 5 of Thursday's Lessons, a show about drawing lessons, of course, from various topics of history and nerdy things in general. My name is Thursday. And I am Varmint. And this is a podcast that can be found on YouTube and SoundCloud, and check out the other episodes, check out our channels, we're on YouTube, Captain Obvious, Varmint Coyote, you can find us in various places, check us out. Today, this show, episode 5, we're talking about Persona 4 again. More specifically, a character named Adachi. By the way, spoilers, for the main villain of this game, he has some pretty messed up worldviews. But, at the same time, we can take his worldviews, even from a fictional character, and apply them to the real world. Because things that he expresses are things that other people really believe. It's not like they wrote this villain out of a vacuum. They wrote him from prevalent ideas in different cultures, various reactions to progress and change. And what we see in him can be found in a lot of other groups, and I think that is important to look at, to see how the media shows a light on us, the real people. And of course, to set the stage for everybody, Persona 4 is a JRPG for the PS2, one of the last games for the PS2 before the big switch to 3. And the main story of this game is about finding the identity of a serial killer using a supernatural means to kill people that the police can't trace. So you and your special team are the only ones that can find him. And as I noted, and again the spoilers, Adachi is the real main killer. He's a police officer that's working with the investigation, seems sort of like a talentless goofball, and it's revealed that in reality he was behind everything. And... When we find out this, it comes with a whole sort of exposition as to why he is sort of the way he is. And this is a very important part of the game, when he drops his facade of being this goofball, hapless detective and reveals the true him. Because his ideas, his beliefs are very much sort of the antithesis of what we like to think about of society, about inherent human goodness, about the way society is just and the way it works, just for the good of everybody. He challenges all of that and basically lays down this line of society is shit, people are shit, everything is shit, so why not do what you want? Now, to start it off, he has very strong superiority issues where he needs to be better than people and in fact perceives himself as being better than most people, just inherently. He starts off with this sort of privileged self-justification where he's better than people, so if he is disciplined or mistreated or whatever, it's always from jealous people. It's always from people not understanding his greatness. And he is, of course, an incredibly selfish and narcissistic person who blames everybody else for his own failings. He says, you know, Everyone around me was such an idiot. I made one tiny mistake, and they all got on my case and sent me out here to Nowheresville as punishment. I was bored shitless and wondering what to do next when I discovered this power. For crying out loud, why a bastard like you? A gift for having to put up with this lame job out in Nowheresville, I guess. Even there, he's barely admitting to his own mistake there. One small mistake, minimizing his own role and his own failure. But another big thing he brings up is the idea that success and power are determined by talent, are determined by something you're born with. And that if you aren't born with this magic ticket called talent, to use his words, that you're just basically boxed in by reality. You're not given choices. You're given a basically a predestined role to fill. And only certain few special people can break free of this. And it's not fair. It's arbitrary. He claims to want fairness, <laughs> but... He really wants power and control. You know, your party is like, but you're a police officer. You're supposed to be enforcing justice. How can you say that? Aren't you a police officer? Out of everything you could have been, didn't you specifically choose to join the police? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Just because someone joins the police doesn't make them some kind of agent of justice. You know why I applied? So I could legally carry a gun. That's all. You'd be surprised how many are like that. Really, 
what he became an officer for was the power. He wanted the power that comes with holding a badge and a gun. And why did he want that power? Because he wanted to have his own f desires fulfilled. He wanted to have control over people. And what, what about him justifies this is that he believes all other people basically are just like him. He accuses the party of just, you know, you're not hunting me for justice. You're hunting me just because you're bored. You want to have a good time, and this seemed interesting. <laughs> he thinks everybody is like him. They just hide it. He's the only honest person about this. Now, let's relate this, shall we, to the real world, huh? Immediately what comes to mind for me is exactly that same behavior where racists are, um, very often believe that exact thing. Oh, everybody's racist. I'm just honest about it. Everyone else just hides it. Everyone's yeah. a little bit racist. Right. And not only with racists, but with, you know, the people like the modern MRAs, in general the sexists who believe that their beliefs are far more prevalent than people claim they are, just most people are scared and hide it. Well, most men probably actually are sexist. They just are afraid of women and don't express it. And so it's that justification that Adachi uses where I bet everybody else is just as craven, selfish, and nihilistic as I am. They just put up a good front. So why am I evil for being just like everyone else? <laughs> you know, it's the fallacy of the group, basically. Oh, everybody's like this, so it can't be bad. It's like what you have with the trolls, right? Because Adachi, in a sense, he is a disaffected idealist. You can see it in him where he thought the world should be better than it is. He could envision a better world, a more fair world, honestly. For him, it really means a world more catered to his own whims. But that aside, he had a vision of a world that should be a lot better than what he got. This world is shit, <laughs> he says. And what does that remind me of? It reminds me of like the 4chan trolls and the other internet trolls, the disaffected idealists who say this world is shit because it should be better, and so I'm just going to piss on the burning ashes. So let's talk about also white privilege, huh? Yeah, a lot of this relates to privilege. Oh yeah, it's all about privilege, but specifically he has that expectation of things just going his way, and that when they don't, he has to find a group to blame. What does that sound like? It does sound a lot like the reactionary white privilege you see, where, oh, I lost my job. It must have been those Mexicans that took my job, those illegal immigrants. Oh, the crime that's happening? Yeah, it's those black people. The Christian persecution complex. Yeah, and it's even police privilege. The idea that having the law and a gun makes you powerful, makes you better than other people. Might makes right. Yes. You know, he also basically points out and is pretty right about the fact that people in general want to ignore reality in favor of their much more comfortable fantasies. That why is he wrong to just ignore reality and its hardships if that's what everybody's doing? If everybody just pretends that a problem doesn't exist, well, we don't have to deal with it anymore. He very much is emblematic of people in general who just don't want to face reality. They don't want to face themselves. Like we talked about in the episode about the fog of lies. That what he's calling out is that everything we talked about in that episode. He's using that to excuse his own failures. To say everybody else does it too. Now, let's talk about why this is all fucked up and wrong, huh? <laughs> why is this just bad thinking? Well, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You think the world is shit and you add nothing but shit into the equation, what do you think you're going to get out? If you look for the world being evil and you look for the worst in everything, that's what you're going to find. And if you do nothing but make it even worse and add your own shit to that pile of shit, well then of course it's not going to get any better. You're, you're making it worse because you think it's bad. Literally, it's a cyclical thing. The more you make it worse, the more you could point at it and say, look how bad it is. <laughs> But that's stupid, literally. It's just stupid because there is that alternative of fixing it. Now, one of the biggest points I think we can make first about Adachi is that he seems to believe that his power, his might, means that he has the right to fulfill himself at the expense of others. That he is owed certain things by the world regardless of how he has to get them. We were talking about privilege, and that is the epitome of privilege right there. The idea that... 
I should have more of a right to these things than you do because of who I am. It's like saying, because I'm white, because I'm cis, because I'm hetero, because whatever, I am more entitled to these things than you. And not even consciously necessarily. It's just innate for a lot of people. For a lot of people. And from let, let's hit specifically on Adachi's views towards women and his actions. Because this really talks about the MRAs and other people, and in general, this sort of misogynistic, sexist societal worldview. Well, where... Hmm? What, what does he do? What, what does Adachi do concerning women? <laughs> the first woman, you know, who ends up being the first victim, is a reporter, basically, who has an affair with this guy. And he was rooting for her on the TV, right? And he confronts her, literally, just out of nowhere. She doesn't know who the fuck he is, confronts her about it. I called her out to the lobby because I wanted to ask her something. And then she started getting hysterical on me. What they say on the news isn't true, is it? All that talk about you having an affair and whatnot, it's all a lie, right? Why do I have to explain myself to you? I see. So you don't deny it. You caught my eye, but it turns out you're another worthless bitch. What's wrong with you? Don't make me call for help. <laughs> it was an accident. She started struggling. What else was I supposed to do? <sighs> Shut up. Shut up, shut up! I think you need to see what it's like to fear for your life. It'll get your head straight. <laughs> what are you going to do? No! <laughs> I was just trying to punish the stupid bitch a little for betraying me. Yeah, putting them inside the TV was never the plan. But you know, both Mayumi and that dippy high school girl struggled for no reason. What? What? purpose or place did he have in any of this? Nothing. There was an affair that happened, she was sleeping with the guy, and it was up to them to solve. But he personally felt owed her loyalty, her chastity, and when she failed to live up to that, he kills her. And then in his next example of interacting with a woman, aka the second victim, this should give you a hint as to his issues with women here, he misconstrues an interaction between a schoolgirl and somebody trying to warn her about danger as being them having a romantic fight. And so he basically puts the play on her and being like, well, I know you're having an affair with this guy, so let me in on that action or I'll tell people. And when she reacts badly to that, as she should, he ends up murdering her, too, for not cooperating. He feels basically owed sex from these women, that they should just be what he wants them to be, and if they don't, they have failed him, and he deserves to punish them. That is that ultimate sexist entitlement, is it not? These women that n don't know him from a fucking doornail, he feels they owe him things. Like, excuse you, but who are you? And also, this is the kind of person who isolates himself from society, denigrates other people, looks down on them, and then turns around and hates them for not including him in their society. He disdains it, but then disdains them further for reacting to that disdain. It's sort of like you tell somebody, hey, I hate you, go away. And then when they walk away, you say, what the hell are you doing walking away from me? Sounds like a double bind. It is. It makes no sense. It's laying expectations on people that are unmeetable. I don't want you around me. Stay around me. How, well, how does that work? How can that work? It can't. But how many people want society, not just Adachi, but how many people in general want society to come to them on their terms? They don't want its baggage. They just want it to be nice and happy for them. They don't want to deal with any of the realities of people. They just want to have society as this sort of diversion, this entertainment. <laughs> you know, the 4chan trolls, the MRAs, and Adachi himself, they all contribute to the very things they see wrong with the world. MRAs and toxic masculinity. Yes. MRAs contribute to toxic masculinity. They contribute to their own failing reputation. They contribute to the very social structures that keep men basically enslaved to this cult of hyper-masculinity. But they blame everyone else. The trolls, they shit on the world and then blame everybody else for the world being covered in shit. 
Adachi himself alienates and isolates himself from other people and is kind of just a shitty person and then blames everybody else for not liking him. It's their fault. And let's talk about for a moment, because it's topical, the idea of police abusing their power. Every time this happens, every time another officer kills somebody or uses their authority to get away with something, the power of the police erodes. The authority that we give them is eroded because they start to look more like common thugs and criminals themselves. They're and made we, more illegitimate by their illegitimate actions. Exactly. And you can say, of course, you know, well, he was just one guy. Sure, but he isn't ever just one guy. There's never just one person. When there's a system and you see abuse happening because of the way the system works, you can be damn sure that that's not the only person abusing that system then. But again, he doesn't take responsibility oh, for no. anything. And in fact, in the game world, it goes to the point where he would rather end the world as he knows it than admit that he could be the problem. He would rather the world be consumed by the fog of illusion and everybody become wrapped up in their own you know, preconceived notions of reality, capable of fully and forever denying existence as it really is, rather than accept reality. <laughs> that reminds me so much of the various people who argue for in favor of things like you know, the MRA beliefs or hardcore Christians or white supremacists, where they would rather literally just tell you to your face that this completely true thing that is indisputable is in fact fake and what they believe is more true. They would rather spit in the face of reality and deny basic 2 plus 2 shit than admit that they could be wrong. Now, here's the thing. The frustrations that begin all of this are there. They're not just dreamt up by him. There are real problems. Because the main problem with Adachi is that he has actual good ideas. It's just that they lead to bad outcomes. Yes. He became twisted by the knowledge of things being wrong. And rather than thinking, I should fix this with my knowledge, he thought, well, the world is shit, so I should dance in the burning ashes. Again, the problem is that he's not willing to actually solve the problems that he himself is highlighting or being an example of. Exactly. Like, let's say, you know, he mentions how talent is the magic ticket, and if you're born without it, you're basically screwed. And that's true. Oh, this is the kind of person you are. Well, this is what we expect you to do. This is what we expect you to be. Oh, you don't have some unique skill or talent or special thing to make you stand out? Well, then this is what you are. You can't escape that in a lot of ways. Look at how racists treat black people. Look at how rich people think of the poor very often, where you have these enforced stereotypes that no amount of reality can break. That's the whole point of episode three, the fog of illusion. People don't generally want to care about reality. They want to believe what makes them happy. They want to believe that, oh, homelessness isn't a real problem because we have an agency for that. They're getting help. This is not a problem that I need to worry about because there are people for that. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. It is. And people accept that too, far too often. And he points that out. Where What does it matter if, I, you know, your quest for the truth? What's the point of it if no one cares? Why are you even wasting your time with this? It's not like anybody gives a shit about reality. And let, that brings us to a good question. What is the value of truth if no one cares about it? If you have a truth and everybody says, eh, whatever, we'd rather believe this lie. Is there a value to that truth then? Of course there is. Sure. There, there's inherent value to truth. But he brings up the point that if nobody gives a shit about the truth, what good does it do? So... It's basically what are you actually doing with that truth? Exactly. What, what purpose does it serve? What merit in does fact, it have? In fact, he lays a question to counter the hero's belief in themselves by asking, you know, seeking an unwanted truth, simply self-satisfaction. If you're going to bring up an uncomfortable truth that hurts people when they could live in a blissful lie instead, are you really doing them a service or are you just satisfying your own desire to be right? Everybody has to ask themselves that question, I think, when <laughs> at least once in their lives, right? Am I actually bringing the truth into this because this matters? Or am I trying to just be correct because I want to be right? One thing that he, he's right about is that the truth is not always the most pressing thing in every situation ever. Now, this is very careful 
thing to step into. <laughs> this is a tightrope. Yes. Because the truth always has its place. It should always be known. But it's... What do you do with it? Yes. And why are you making it known at that moment? Are you actually just trying to illuminate other people's understanding? Or are you trying to just prove that you know more? It's the same kind of idea as being tactful with the truth. Exactly. He abuses this idea, of course, to justify his belief in lies over truth, but that doesn't delegitimize his point, even if he abuses it. Basically, Adachi represents a rejection of society through individualization and prejudice. He isolates himself by thinking himself superior to the masses, and he thinks himself, or he thinks the masses to be inferior in various ways. He elevates himself and lowers everyone else. And so, him and the groups that we've linked his ideas to are basically the source of their own issues. You know, he blames society for his own problems. He takes no personal responsibility. This does very well represent the issues had by the MRAs, the races, sexes, all of it, where they want someone else to blame for what's wrong. They want a specific group, in fact, an easy-to-point-to-and-identify enemy that simplifies everything and ties it up in a bow and says, if we just hate these people, it's all better. When reality's never that simple, that clean. It's never that easy to pick out who is bad. You can't just say, this group is bad. Because in every group ever, there are good people and bad people. To simplify and isolate based on such childish criteria will lead you to personal isolation and rejection. It's very simple. If you treat women as though they are inferior and demand of them to be subordinate to you, don't be surprised if they react badly to you. No one likes being told that. And he refuses to play by society's rules, but then becomes upset that society won't accept him. It's sort of like, you know, how you have people who will say, you know, I should just be able to call black people, Mexicans, whatever, whatever I want to call them. And it's PC culture that I can't. But they understand that we don't like it when this happens. They understand that if they go from the rooftop shouting, you know, obscenities about people, they're going to be judged for it. Yet they do it and then are shocked and hurt that they are judged. Again, the persecution complex. I yes. just wanted something to whinge about. And it's like, it is a persecution complex because you don't need the right to say that specific thing. And also, you knew exactly what was going to happen when you said that thing. The result is predictable, so don't act surprised. <laughs> he objects to people believing lies over truth, but partakes of that himself fully. Mm -hmm. Over the course of his interrogation, quote-unquote, when you're confronting him, he waffles between, oh, I didn't know they were going to die, to, oh, I'm not going in that death trap, to they deserved it, all of them. <laughs> Changing his, the motivations, the points he was making, lying all the time during his discussion about other people lie. <laughs> it perfectly mirrors the completely utilitarian rhetorical arguments and semantic vacuous bullshit by MRAs and anti-feminists. Yes, where they, anytime they don't like what someone else is saying, or fair enough, they catch a feminist in a lie or something wrong, right? They pounce upon that instantly and say, you are completely worthless and utterly untrustworthy and a piece of shit because you used this one lie or incorrect piece of information. Yet they will sit there and present entire arguments based on complete fiction. And when you call them on that, that's just my opinion and I have every right to it. They can lie freely and without judgment, but if you lie, you're a bad person. You're a piece of shit. You are obviously manipulating things. But when we lie, it's just our opinion. <laughs> That's called hypocrisy. They talk about how they approached women. They use things like negging and mind control techniques, basically, or what they want to be mind control techniques. They're, you know, pick up artist game and all that shit to manipulate women into sex. And then they get a bad reputation and nobody wants to talk to them. And they're like, how dare you? How dare you judge us for our terrible behaviors? <laughs> no, you're... you're doing terrible behaviors. We have every right and expectation to judge on that. To say that we don't have the right to judge you for doing harmful things is insanity. It makes no sense. 
And there's that utter self-importance and entitlement he has, where he thinks women and the whole world owes him whatever he wants, despite having him having nothing to do with them or putting no effort into it. This mirrors, you know, the men who think that women owe them sex, the white people who think that they are owed superiority and preferential treatment, that their privilege is actually just the natural order of things, you know, rich people who think that their wealth is basically divinely imparted upon them and that they deserve and demand that they keep that wealth because, God damn it, they are wealthy, which means they can never not be wealthy just because they are wealthy. There's this entitlement that he both calls out and exemplifies. <laughs> it's, that's, that's what it is. Again, it's like so often, it's the difference between what you say and what you do. Yes. Oh, yes. Because that's Adachi in a nutshell, is he talks a great game, right? About being frustrated about the world and all of his legitimate complaints. But he exemplifies every single thing that he calls out. Just like with the MRAs who might have legitimate talking points concerning individual men's issues and do nothing but use them as a bludgeon to beat on feminists. Right, because he has a bunch of legitimate issues about how society's jacked up. But what does he do with that information? He rides it. He, he becomes a part of the problem while decrying it. Like, MRAs are such hypocrites with this, where they lie and misrepresent about feminists constantly. And... At the same time, they're being complete hypocrites because they're accusing us of lying while they're lying about us lying in the first place. When they say that we make up statistics and bullshit, that's them purposely misunderstanding bullshit, but now that becomes our fault and our responsibility to correct for them somehow. It's shifting of responsibility again. They can't take personal responsibility for their shit. And so suddenly it's foisted upon us. And it all comes down to a childish hypocrisy, an, a desire to live by different standards than one applies to everyone else. Adachi is a great case study for the ideas of a person, a man-child, right? Being unwilling to accept that they are a part of the problem that they see with the world. No, I'm different. I'm special. I shouldn't be included in this. They look at the world's problems and they say, that has nothing to do with me. And so, from that springs the ability to do whatever you want. Well, if it has nothing to do with me, I can do those things, but I'm not affecting the world. I can commit that crime, but I'm not a part of that problem. It's I'm doing it. It's different from them. It's utter self-righteousness. Yes. And it's that utter individualization of things that can't be individualized. You can't separate yourself from the group statistic of crime if you're committing crime. You are now a part of that statistic. You are another criminal. You can't exceptionalize yourself away from that. You can't, you know, alienate yourself from a group that you have included yourself in by dint of action. So, yes, you know, Persona 4 is a pretty awesome game. It brings up a lot of social issues, Adachi being one of their primary mechanics for this, by bringing up so much of what's wrong with people's approach to fixing things, where they give in to the nihilism instead of hope for a better change. They, rather than saying, I want to fix the world, well, I'd better get my two licks in before it all burns down. He's everything that's wrong with things like 4chan and the MRAs. The people who say the world is shit, well, I'd better add to that shit and get mine in before it all finishes, rather than we'd better fix it while we still can. And so, yeah. I say, if you haven't played the game, totally go play it. It's a great game. It explores a lot of different social issues. Adachi is just one. I could make a whole other show talking about the different issues brought up by people's shadows and how what we think of other people in society is a powerful tool against them as much as anything else where people trying to live up to what we see of them can ruin them because they want to be something that they're not because we expect it of them adachi is a perfect example of what can happen when you're made to feel powerless and so you have to seek out power in bad ways yes that will close this because that is the perfect point to end on which is that Adachi is the result of, although it doesn't excuse his actions, 
the, the social feeling of powerlessness that so many people struggle with today, that feeling of my voice isn't heard. No matter how powerful and privileged you are, you still feel like, well, I'm just another cog in the machine. I don't matter. I have no voice or power, so I'm going to do whatever I can to make my existence meaningful and impactful. I'm going to do something so that I feel like I am in control. Good intentions lead to hell. Oh, yes.